welcome to Point Blank, the show where we look at the hottest issues and find out what Singaporeans are talking about. I'm Amanda. I'm Lynn. Gambling's on the cards tonight and with us about to roll the dice are... Yep, uh, our guest, Mr. Mm -hmm. Charles Lee, a senior counsellor with the Tanjong Paga Family Service Centre. This is Mr. Kuo Hao Nam, President okay. of <laughs> Credit Counselling Singapore, <laughs> and Mr. Patrick Lee, Associate Director of uh, Promised Land Independent. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, first up, let us take a look at the video on what Singaporeans think about gambling. Mm -hmm. okay. The casinos in Marina Bay and St. Chosa may only be ready in one to two years' time, but Singaporeans are never short of options to gamble their money away. Occasionally, a few um, special numbers. And if you would really like a taste of casino, there's always... And not to mention your casino cruises and online poker rooms. So why are Singaporeans obsessed with gambling? Maybe they want to get more money, then can have a good feast. Everyone dream about you know making easy money. Uh, no, one day, who knows? Something will be dropping on top. More forms of betting have been legitimatized, and their popularities are also on the rise. But luckily, most people are not blind to the potential social ills of problem gambling. I waste money, I bet happy I win every day if I don't buy. If let's say you have spare cash, for example, um, a little bit, I think it's a good form of relaxation. But if you use the whole, whole salary, everything, you borrow to, to get more, then that's very bad. You don't need to buy too much. Like you buy 50 money, you have 50 money, then you have 50 money. If you have 50 money, you have 50 money, you have 50 money, you have 50 money, you you have 50 money, you have 50 money, you have 50 Yep, welcome back. Um, so what do you think? Like, is, has gambling become like a way of life here in Singapore? Mm. Well, I think uh, the given the crowds at the uh, various, uh, you know, uh, booths, I think uh, everybody likes a flutter every now and then, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Especially you get a, what, $8 million total <laughs> price. Oh, the queues are very long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why do you think Singaporeans are so crazy about gambling? They just want to gamble on everything, Charles. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I don't think uh, this is something that is a Singaporean phenomenon for a start. I think um, human nature is such that we all, um, you know, want to uh, have more, and we are um, what you call uh, pushed by greed, uh, and also the hope of um, getting a big windfall. So, um, if you look at um, you know gamblers in other countries, you know, I think it's a, a something to do with our human nature. Mm -hmm. when people want to gamble. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, um, what we're talking about here is uh, the people who become addicted to gambling. Mm -hmm. So you think it's okay to just dabble in total and 4D, Patrick? Yeah. See, the, the problem is that, you see, human beings are uh, creatures of habit. So it becomes a habit, like what Charles has said, it may be addiction. And when the addiction comes in, and we, we know that it's going to be very difficult to, to uh, be a... Uh, get rid, to get rid of our habits. So in terms of addiction, I think uh, the, the sad fact is that there are more people who are going to be addicted to all uh, forms of gambling, mm. whether you're Toto, or even if I can, can venture to say, even in the current stock market, for example, mm -hmm. that many people have actually uh, tried to make a quick mark by things like Contra. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I think if you can see the market today, it, it's actually a uh, sparring down and uh, I can I can say that there are a lot of people there who are actually uh, suffering losses mm -hmm. and therefore I think uh, in terms of what we we can expect that uh, there'll be more people who hopefully will turn to the uh, credit counting. Okay, yes. but, but still, you know, <coughs> just playing a little bit in total, a little bit in 4D, you know, a bit of mahjong, it's harmless, isn't well, it? Well, you're right because yeah. um, there are actually different groups or classes of gamblers. 
Um, there's the social gambler, you know, who plays once in a while. Uh, there's the more serious social gambler who plays more regularly, but then still within control. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then of course you come to the uh, fifth group, which is the pathological, and mm -hmm. that's what we consider as those who are really addicted to gambling, mm -hmm. where they have really lost control of themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there is a danger that leisure gambling can turn into problems. It's progressive, gambling. definitely. Mm -hmm. um, just like you know, if someone were to start. Um, drinking one glass and then they find that, oh, well, you know, this helps, you know, it relieves me of uh, my worries and all that. And then they start to turn to it more and more regularly as a uh, form of coping, mm -hmm. all right? And then they become more and more dependent on it. Gambling is the same thing. In fact, if you look at all addiction, um, they are all ways people cope, except that it is a negative uh, coping mechanism or habit, as you say, whereby negative in the sense that it's bringing in more problems than solving the problems, mm -hmm. all right? Um, and then, of course, there are also positive uh, addictions, you know, people who love sports and uh, workaholics, and, which, you know, bring positive things to their lives and families. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about negative uh, coping mechanisms, which mm -hmm. are addiction. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we do see major trends in gambling in Singapore, and um, I think there are some interesting facts and mm -hmm. figures to share. Yep, yep. Uh, we have some facts we got from... Yes, NCPG, <laughs> the, the National uh, Council on Problem mm -hmm. Gambling. And I guess uh, the, the issue of problem gambling in Singapore has become like a hot topic since like mm -hmm. the decision to mm. build the, the first casino and mm -hmm. IRs. But mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people worry whether you know, this will cause yeah. like a social problem. But uh, we have some figures that yeah. uh, we'll show you. Uh, the first one... Mm -hmm. uh, this is some figures that we got. It says 75% of gamblers started at age 24 or younger. And 25% actually started when they were less than 18 years old, which is quite alarming. Mm -hmm. right? So according to NCPG, many youths regard gambling as a social activity. Like, you know, when they play mahjong or play card games with their friends, when they go to chalets. And like studies have shown that youths who gamble are four times more likely to become addicted to gambling. So I mean, with yeah. figures like these, it is quite alarming. Mm -hmm. Eight out of ten gamblers place uh, bets of up to $100. But the... The interesting thing is, you know, they place so uh, much money on bets and 60% are earning less than $1,000 a month. Mm. So that's like a tenth of their income. Mm. So I guess this is something we should be worried about. I, I, yeah. I think the relatively the lower income group divert a bigger mm. portion of their income into gambling. Mm -hmm. So I think that it, it in this particular case, I think it addresses another uh, need, I think, buying a dream, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, they 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 are already very hard pressed. You know, not enough resources. You know, every day is a struggle. So, buying a a ticket well gives them a chance to to <laughs> well you know strike it rich. You know, so yeah. that's that's part of the problem. But I think it, basically, I think it really becomes a problem only when that start to build up. When mm. people gamble using credit, mm. uh, that's where the full. Uh, repercussions, all the negative aspects of problem gambling uh, are multiplied. Mm. You know, if a person can gamble, he can afford to gamble, then personally, I don't think he's a, <laughs> he's a problem gambler. Yeah. But most of the problem gamblers we see invariably always have very huge debt. Yeah. And they, they'll gamble to the point where they run out of credit facilities, their family's budget is affected, they, they can't put food on the table, and that's where, uh, you know, they start looking for assistance. Uh. Mm -hmm. They are driven to the wall. Uh, you know. mm -hmm. I see. So, like yeah. Charles, like uh, what he mentioned. So, how do you draw the line? Like, if you can afford it, that that means you're not a problem gambler. Um, well, <laughs> uh, when we when we call someone clinically, when we call someone or term them a um, problem a pathological mm -hmm. gambler, uh, there are certain uh, criteria that they have to show. All right, and these criteria are spelled out by the. Um, uh, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual all right, of the APA, American Psychological Association. Mm -hmm. And uh, so some of these criteria might be, for example, um, getting into debts, all right, financial difficulties, getting into relationship problems, all right, breakups and all that, marriages, you know, ending up in divorces. Um, they, it, there's an increase in tolerance. That means uh, they keep, at first when they start, you know, they may say, spend a hundred like mm -hmm. yeah. figures and then if this goes on it may end up they spend their whole pay a thousand dollars and it happens 
Yeah. Okay, so there's an increase in tolerance. Um, some may also show like you know withdrawal withdrawal symptoms. Uh, I remember this uh, young man, you know, in the tw 24 year old that I saw, and when he stopped for three days, he was ever so anxious, and I asked him why. He said, "Well, you know, if I don't buy now, my number may come out." <laughs> you know, so that caused him a lot of anxiety. <laughs> he couldn't sleep and all that. You know, for three days, four days. You know. So these are some of the criteria that we look for when we uh, say that someone is addicted. Mm -hmm. okay? And then of course the others would be things like lying to the family, hiding all, right? all the um, tickets and all that. Okay? Uh, and if the, the client is not really convinced, then what I will do is that, all right, you know, we have this um, checklist, all right, questionnaires, mm -hmm. uh, 25 questionnaires. It's called the South Oaks uh, Gambling Screen. And then they'll just take off. All right, at the end of it, I'll score and I'll say, okay, your score is more than five or whatever, you know, that means you're a gambler, all right, addicted. So then um, that helps them to accept, all right, um, their situation where gambling is concerned. I see. So, so we, we don't anyhow just term someone a addicted gambler, mm -hmm. all right, or pathological. I yeah. see. So if I don't see kelp, then I wouldn't know, right? <laughs> um, because well, there's no way to... As, as I think, uh, you know, uh, some of the um, people being interviewed earlier, the, the public, you know, uh, a lot of times people don't see that it is possible to become addicted to gambling. And the reason is pretty simple. If you think you know, about addiction, most times the image that comes to you is either you swallow something, you smoke something, or you uh. inject something. Mm. Right? It's to do with substance. Mm. All right, chemicals, um, heroin, whatever. Yeah. Okay, but people don't realize that there are a lot of other forms of addiction that is possible because of the psychological effects it has. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that's what we are dealing with. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree, and we actually have even more interesting figures and case studies yep. to talk <laughs> about, Amanda. Okay. Yep, and like the mm. next slide, mm. this is how much Singaporeans spent on gambling last year. $4.2 <laughs> billion, dollars, <laughs> out of which uh, $1.9 billion was spent on horse racing, another $535 million spent on Toto. That's one of the more popular <laughs> gambling <laughs> things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, uh, yeah, last year there were 175 cases of problem gambling. This is actually uh, 74 cases more than 2006. The average amount, oh, look at this, $58,457. And 93% of the gamblers were men aged 30 to 49. So I guess in the sort of middle yes. <laughs> aged group. That's why we have men here tonight <laughs> to talk about this. Who are non addicted gamblers, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but. So, I mean, the average amount owed is like over $50,000. Yeah. Nearly sixty. Yeah, nearly mm, sixty. Mm, so, mm. like, when you owe such a large amount, what, what, what should you do? What do yeah. you do? Um, well, what yeah. have you got to say? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Give us some advice. Uh, actually, I, I use some statistics on my own. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, we, two years ago, about, only about 7% of the people who come to us seeking uh, help with their debts uh, about 7% say it's because of gambling. Mm. But uh, over the last uh, year, last year and up to now, almost uh, the figure has actually jumped up to close to 30%. So now you can say, well, why is it like that? Are they more honest? Mm. Or are they really, uh, is, is the, 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 this, this problem growing? You know? Personally, I feel that this figure is in fact suppressed because a lot of people, they, when they come to see us, they don't like to say that it's because of gambling, you know. So I suspect that the figure is actually much higher, mm. you know. And, and uh, the yeah. average debt that we handle uh, for gambler is close to $70,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they are mostly on credit card and all these unsecured lines. And they are, uh, the average age is about, about 40. Uh. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because there are people, like you said, who don't come to you. I mean, Patrick, for instance, I mean, you've been through this yes. kind of, and you kept it to yourself yes. and you went through it yes. by yourself. Mm. You know, would you want to just, I mean, why didn't you want to, you know, seek help from someone like credit counseling? We weren't there at that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we only have a five years old. <laughs> I think the, the, the primary uh, uh, problem is that we, we actually, you know, when we incur debts, uh, Mm -hmm. 
as being brought up a traditional way is very shameful. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that's why, you know, you want to keep to yourself. And even I, I have not uh, made this known to my family. Mm. And I, I felt that I, I could manage it. And uh, how I manage it is, is actually uh, uh, through various means, uh, like what, uh, what the, uh, the unsecured uh, lines of credit and credit card advances, things like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just like, you know, trying to patch up that hole as best as I can every month. And of course, uh, with the kind of uh, uh, debt that I had been incurred, uh, I have to li- live a very sp- uh, Spartan lifestyle. Yeah. And I uh, give up a lot of lot of stuff that uh, you know that I take for granted mm-hmm. previously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think, but throughout the process, I think thank God that I I, I was disciplined enough mm-hmm. uh, without seeking help. But yet I was very disciplined to 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 be uh, you know like like what I uh, like I shared with uh, my wife that I do not want to run away from the creditors. We sit down and we like what. Uh, Hunam has said that we, we want to restructure the, the debt and, mm-hmm. and, and, and keep the timetable and, and, and faithfully you know, just to pay that debt every month. Mm-hmm. And um, it was very tough, but uh, I, mm-hmm. I, it really taught me a lesson. And uh, you can say I'm a reformed person now. Uh, and as a Christian, I believe that God has a big part to play my my, my life and how I managed to overcome this uh, addiction to gambling. Mm. So you were aware that there were avenues for you to go to, but you chose not to then? Yes, mm-hmm. because of this uh, stigma, of the shame that that is, is something which I, I, I carry very heavily in my heart. So mm-hmm. I think uh, I, I really do not want to talk to anyone about it, except to God. Yeah, but you yeah. borrowed, you know, 380000 and you lost that. I mean, that's a lot to oh, go through on your own. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. I, I, I believe... At that point of time, the government did not impose things like you know, your 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 credit card where you you actually have two times your your monthly salary or even your line of credit and things like that. That that time they were just throwing money to you. Mm-hmm. And you all you have to do is just sign on the dotted line and say that you want to take that line of credit or uh, uh, the credit cards and things like that. So it was very easy. Mm. And I'm glad that the government has done something about this and restricted the uh, the amount the, the maximum amount that you extend whether it's credit card okay. or or unsecured loans. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for that, Patrick. We're going for a break now. Stay mm-hmm. with us. Yeah, we'll be back soon. Yeah. <laughs>